Hello friends, welcome to this next video on complex analysis. In the last video we have seen that any function f from c to c can be seen or is equivalent to two functions from r2 to r. Okay, But we didn't see any example in the last video. So let us look at the example. Right? Suppose you have this function f of z is equal to z square plus 2z. So basically this is a function from c to c right because if z is any complex number right then z square plus 2z is also a complex number therefore this is a function from c to c i would like to know what are the equivalent functions u and v right so it is very simple what you have to do you have to just write z as x plus iota y right so basically your w is f of z is equal to z square plus 2 times z so this is equal to x plus iota y square plus 2 into x plus iota y. You can just separate the real and imaginary parts. Here you can use the formula a plus b whole square. You have a square plus b square plus 2ab. And this is simply 2 into x plus 2 iota y. So then I just use that iota square is minus 1 here. So I have this real part. This is also real. This is real. So this is x square minus y square plus 2x plus iota times 2xy plus 2y. So, w is this function. Okay. So, basically, if you compare this thing with w of z is ux, y plus iota times vx, y, then you have your ux, y as x square plus y square, x square minus y square plus 2x. This is one function. And your vx, y is 2xy plus 2y. 2xy plus 2y. So, in this way, this function, which was a function from C to C, okay, this particular function is equivalent to these two functions, which are functions from R square to R, right? Okay, this was an example. Now, let, let's move on to the next thing. Whenever you define a function, after that you want to, you know, visualize that function graphically. For example, if you have a function f of x is equal to x square, right? You know that how you draw the graph of this function, you have, this is, this is basically a function of single variable. So this is your x, this is your f of x. So you know that this graph is like this, right? Passing through 0, 0, of course, right? This is a parabola, upward parabola, right? Now, similar thing we would like to, you know, uh, c in uh, functions from c to c, right? Here you had in this particular case, when you have a function of one variable, you are going from r to r. So you don't, you, uh, you have total two dimensions. So you can simply draw it on a paper. You have x here, you have fx here, right? And if you have a function of two variable, right? Say z is equal to f of x comma y, then also somehow you draw it. You have x axis here, y axis here, and z your function here. You make the surfaces. That also you can see. But in case of complex numbers, you have already seen that. Uh, sorry, in case of functions from complex plane to complex plane, you have already seen that a function from C to C is equivalent to two functions from R two to R, right? Okay. So basically, you have four. Uh, both these functions are functions of x and y. These are your independent variable and u and v are dependent variable. So basically you have four things which you have to show and you cannot show that on a paper, right? So that is the difficulty with functions from C to C, right? That you cannot uh, see it on a paper. Like we see the functions from R to R. We can see it on paper very nicely. From R square to R we can see like up to three dimensions we can see the functions we can draw the functions on the paper but be, uh, like after that four dimensions we cannot draw so here in case of function of uh, functions from c to c we have four variables x and y these are independent variables and u and v these are dependent variables so basically we have to show four variables and we cannot show right so we look for some other way okay so what we do we just take the x y plane separately and uv plane separately right what we do we just draw the domain and range of the function okay that will give you some idea of the function not exactly how the function looks but that that will give you some idea okay okay 
so let us look at one example of how to uh, visualize these complex functions functions from complex plane to complex plane right so this is one example you have this function f of z is equal to x square plus 2 i that defined on this closed disk right so up you have to tell how this function looks and what is the range of this function right so basically what is the domain domain is where your function is defined and you are defining the function on this closed disk right mod z less than is equal to 1 what is this mod z means absolute value of z that is x plus i eta y absolute value is less than is equal to 1 and what is this this is square root of x square plus y square less than is equal to 1 that is x square plus y square less than is equal to 1 what is this this is a circle so basically mod z less than is equal to 1 is inside of this circle okay so this is our domain right now what we are doing with this function so what you are doing with this your function is f of z is equal to x square plus 2 eta so z is x plus eta y you are taking it to x square plus 2 eta right now if you compare it with u of x comma y plus eta times v of x comma y then you have u of x comma y as x square and v of x comma y as 2 uh, 2 okay so i have told you in the last slide that what we do we make uh, we draw x y plane here and we draw u v plane here right now you are in uh, domain you have this disk okay in this disk x can take value from 1 to from minus 1 to 1 right your x can vary from minus 1 to 1 therefore x square if you uh, you are taking your function x plus eta y your function is taking x plus eta y to x square plus 2 eta here x can take values from minus 1 to 1 Therefore, x square will take values from 0 to 1. Okay. So, your u will take value from 0 to 1. Is that thing clear? When x is moving from minus 1 to 1, your x square will move from 0 to 1. x square is nothing but u. Therefore, u will take values from 0 to 1. Okay. And this is your v. v is 2. So, v is constant. v is constant. So, what will be the range of the function? How it will look? The range will look like this, right? So your x can take values from 0 to 2, right? This is your 2 and y is constant. So basically you have, sorry, not x and y, u and v. Your u is taking values from 0 to 2, okay? And v is constant and it is equal to 2. So this is that line segment from here to here, from 0 to 2, this is the line segment. So this is how your function will look like okay you start from here this is your domain right and this is your range only this line segment is your range right so this is how we like somehow show the complex uh, functions from complex numbers to complex numbers functions from complex plane to complex plane let us look at one more example this picturization will give you some like clarity in your mind and how things are going right so let us look at one more example suppose you have this function f of z is equal to z cube that is your function f of z is equal to z cube and your domain is given by this right so your domain is that mod of z is less than is equal to 2 now we have seen that this is a circle disk inside like this is a disk and you are given that imaginary of z is greater than or equal to 0 imaginary of z uh, so let us first draw this domain okay this is this will define your domain so this is your x-axis this is your y-axis so th what is this this is inside of the disk of radius 2 and but this thing says that y should be greater than or equal to 0 imaginary of z means y should be greater than or equal to 0 it means that you have to just consider the upper part of the disk is that thing clear mod of z less than is equal to 2 is this whole disk right this whole disk is this whole disk is mod of z less than is equal to 2 but you are given that your y should be positive so you have to just consider this part okay so let us see what is our domain so we this is our domain okay? this is that part 
right now we want to look at what is the co uh, corresponding range so you have to separate it into u and v for that you have to put x as z as x plus i eta y right you can just or we can use th this is one way but whenever you have you are given the powers using the polar coordinates is the easiest thing right so i know that i can write z as x plus i eta y or i can write z as r e raised power i eta theta okay so i have f of z is equal to r e raised power i eta theta raised to power 3 so f of z is your r cube e raised power i eta 3 theta okay so in this case we will not draw x and y things we will write everything in form of r and theta right so basically when you have mod z less than is equal to 2 what is this it means that r is less than is equal to 2 right so basically r takes the value from 0 to 2 okay because r is positive always okay r is taking value from 0 to 2 mod z is less than is equal to 2 it implies r e raised power eta theta mod is less than is equal to 2 this is mod r e raised power eta theta is nothing but cos theta plus eta sin theta mod less than is equal to 2 and r is positive this is how polar coordinates are defined so mod r is nothing but r and cos theta plus eta sin theta when you take the modulus it will be cos square theta plus sin square theta square root that is 1 so you get r is less than is equal to 2 so in our domain in our domain r is less than is equal to 2 and of course it is positive right and when you take the function you have f of z is equal to r cube e raised power eta 3 theta so this is your r now this will work as r so it means that from here when you go from here to here right r will change to r cube here r can take value between 0 to 2 Therefore, R cube will take values from 0 to 8. Right? So, it means that when you go from this to this, uh, from XY plane to UV plane, right? Your radius will change from 2 to 8. Right? So, you have a circle of radius 8. Right? Now, let us look at angle. In your domain, your theta goes from 0 to pi, right? In your domain, your theta goes from 0 to pi, right? Now, let us look at range. In your range, the theta is actually 3 theta. See, what you are doing, you are taking f of z is equal to r cube e raised to power 3 theta, eta 3 theta. It means that r is going to r cube and theta is going to 3 theta, right? Okay? So, it means that and in your domain, theta varies from 0 to pi. Theta varies from 0 to pi. Okay. Let us just take a new slide so that we can have a better idea. So, in your domain, r is varying from 0 to 2 and theta is varying from 0 to pi. And in your range, r is going to r cube. And theta is going to 3 theta. Therefore, this r cube will be vary from 0 to 8. Right? Now, let us look at theta. When you have this particular thing. Right? Instead of going from 0 to pi, you just go from 0 to theta from 0 to 2 pi by 3. Right? When theta is from 0 to 2 pi by 3, your 3 theta is lying between... 0 and pi, 2 pi. Okay. Right. Now, can you see? It means that this part of the domain, right, will take us to which circle? Let us draw that circle. Here, the radius was 2. This is 2, right? Now, the radius will be 8. Radius is 8. Okay. Sorry for my drawing. And this whole thing is covered because your theta is varying from 3 theta is varying from 0 to pi 2 pi 0 to 2 pi means you have covered this whole section right so it means that this part of the domain under the function f of z is equal to z cube 
will take to take you to this whole circle whole disk right now this much part is left okay let us let us draw a clear picture okay suppose this is radius 8 okay so this part of the domain takes you here whatever i have drawn now i am left with this part of the domain okay what is this part this part is theta lying between 2 pi by 3 and pi it means that 3 theta lying between 3 pi and 2 pi okay it means that this is my 2 pi this line shows theta is equal to 2 pi this line Uh, like refers to theta is equal to two pi, and this line correspond to theta is equal to three pi. It means that this circle is again, this part of the disk is again covered. So it means that under this function f of z is equal to z cube. When we move from here to here in our domain, we get the whole disk with radius eight, and when again we cover this part of the domain, this half disk is again covered, right? so this is how some this is somehow like we try to see how a function from c to c behaves like right? so we don't have like very clear things as we have in case of functions from r to r right we don't have that you know privilege here but still somehow we get like some insight into how of how the functions from c to c like look okay thank you <laughs>